saying those noble tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and, and dwelt God among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Domino 
Sumo Sobiscum, et cum Spiritu Tuo. Parvenus. Excita doble corda nostra et preparandas unigeniti tui vias, ut per eius eventum purificatis tibi mensibus, se vine meriamo, qui tecum vivit alenia tu limitati Spiritu Santi Deus, per amia secula seculorum. Amen. Parvenus. Neus, qui deberate marie vicinis, utro verbo tuum, angelo nunziante carnem suscipere volubisti, preste supplicibus tuis, ut quid veria em genetricem de credimus, eus apod intercessionibus agi vegum. Ecclesia tue pessus, domini precis peccatus emite, ut distruzis abstissasi positivonibus universi, sepuliti vi servi limitate. Per domino nostro mi esum Cristo, fine in tuum, Deus, 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 Ut unanimes uno hor hor honorificentis Deum et Patrum Domini Nostri Iesu Christi. Prote quod suscipi Deum dicem, sicut et Christus suscepi vossi honorem Dei. Dico Deum Christum Iesu Ministrum, cui visse e circuncisionis prote veritatem Dei, et confirmando as promissionis Patrum, gente autem suco misericordia honorare Deum, sicut scriptum est. Proterri e confitevo divi in gentibus Domine, et nomini tuo cantavo. Et iterum dicit, le tamini gentes cum plebis ei, plebe eius. Et iterum, laudate omne gentes dominum, et magnificate eum omnes populi. Et russus is aes ei, erit radix iesse, et qui es surge dreceri gentes in eum gentes speravum. Deus autem spere, pleat vos omni gaudio, et pace in credendo, ut abundetis in spe, et vertute spiritus sanct. Deus gracias, sección especies de corris eus, deus manifiste e venie, corregate iris sanctus eus, qui ordina verum testamentum eus, super sacrificia. Sancti Vangeli secondo Matteo, Gloria a Dio di Domini. E nello tempo ricordisi più alti vincoli sopra a Cristi, mentre i due stessi discepoli sui sei figli. Tu esprime il tuo rosest, an allium expectamus. E risponde Gesù e Dios, e un te sronunciate Giovane, qui audisti se vidistis. Ceci vident audi ambulant, le prossimo d'antur, Surti audium, mortui resumum, pauperes evangelizandur, et beatus esqui non fluere scandilizatus in me. Iris autem aviuncibus, cebit Iesus dicere, tuo peste Ioane. Qui id existis in desetum videre, aluntine vento agitata, se qui id existis videre, omine monibus vestitum, ece qui monibus vestitum, tu rindomibus remusum. Se qui id existis videre, Profetam, et siam digo vobis, et plus quam profetam, hic est enum de coscriptum est, ece ego mitu angelum meum ante facem tuam, quei preparabit viam tuam ante te. Laus tibi Christi. in the week following the second Sunday of Advent, the epistle is taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans. Brethren, see how all the words written long ago were written for our instruction. We were to derive hope from that message of endurance and courage which the scriptures bring us. May God, the author of all endurance and all encouragement, enable you to be all of one mind according to the mind of Christ Jesus, 
so that you may all have but one heart and one mouth to glorify God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You must befriend one another as Christ has befriended you for God's honour. I would remind those who are circumcised that Christ came to relieve their needs. God's fidelity demanded it. He must make good his promises to our fathers. And I will remind the Gentiles to praise God for his mercy. So we read in scripture, I will give thanks to thee for this and sing of thy praise in the midst of the Gentiles. And again it says, You too, Gentiles, rejoice with his own people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, let all the nations of the world do him honour. And once more Isaiah says, A root shall spring from Jesse, one who shall rise up to rule the Gentiles. The Gentiles in him shall find hope. May God, the author of our hope, fill you with all joy and peace in your believing, so that you may have hope in abundance through the power of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Gospel is a continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At this time, John had heard in prison of Christ's doings, and he sent two of his disciples to him to ask him, Is it thy coming that was foretold, or are we yet waiting for some other? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what your own ears and eyes have witnessed, how the blind see and the lame walk, how the lepers are made clean and the deaf hear, how the dead are raised to life and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Blessed is the man who does not lose confidence in me. As they went out, Jesus took occasion to speak of John to the multitudes. What was it, he asked, that you expected to see when you went out into the wilderness? Was it a reed trembling in the wind? No, not that. What was it you went out to see? Was it a man clad in silk? You must look in king's palaces for men that go clad in silk. What was it then that you went out to see? A prophet? Yes, and something more, I tell you, than a prophet. This is the man of whom it was written, Behold, I am sending before thy face that angel of mine who is to prepare thy way for thy coming. How many for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the many parties of Filii, Svetus Sancti. Amen. 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 beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass. As we say on this sixth feria, the Friday following the second Sunday of Advent. We've reflected uh, this week uh, on the themes of, uh, the two themes of Advent, of course, the uh, looking forward to the commemoration of the Nativity, of the Incarnation, the first coming of the Saviour, and also, too, of looking toward the second coming. This week, particularly, we have uh, been reflecting on the nature of heaven, of the kingdom that is to come, of the new Jerusalem, uh, and how it is that the Messiah uh, foretold was for all peoples, not just uh, for uh, the Jews, not just for Israel, but for all the Gentiles. Uh, sorry, but for the people of all the world, and of course, of all time. We've also, uh, just uh, relating to the epistle we've just heard about being of one mind in Christ Jesus, we also commemorated this week the great doctor of the church, St. Ambrose of Milan, where our reflections uh, were about maintaining uh, steadfastly the true apostolic faith that we in our turn have received and are charged to pass on, that others too may find that straight and narrow path that leads to the holy city, that leads to blessed Salem, that leads to that door which is opened to us by Christ. Yesterday we reflected on the nature of our vocation, uh, celebrating the conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We reflected on how it is that each and every one of us was purposed by God into existence to fulfill his invitation to us, firstly, to receive our salvation, and secondly, to fulfill his will for our lives in this life. So today, my brothers and sisters, let us reflect, and um, we might be uh, picking up sort of where we left off last Tuesday, uh, on the ferial themes of Advent, and let us reflect how it is that we ourselves are called to be prophetic voices. At the end of the Gospel, our Lord asks the multitude that question, What did you go into the desert, into the wilderness to see? 
He gives various options, and he says, a prophet. And of course, they had gone into the wilderness to see a prophet. They knew that St. John the Baptist was prophesying. Word had gone out and about of his call to repentance and to baptism. Repent and be baptized. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight his path. And in our own time, my brothers and sisters, as we reflected last Sunday, we too are called, as St. Paul says, to be ambassadors of Christ. We are called to be, like St. John the Baptist, heralds of the second coming. We, of course, by virtue of our duty, as we reflected yesterday, each and every one of us called to fulfill the will of God. And the will of God is that every person be saved. Thus, it is beholden on every baptized person to preach the good news, to preach and share the gospel of salvation, that others may know the Messiah, that, that the Messiah has been, and that the Messiah will come. And it is about this second coming, my brothers and sisters, that we really should not stint in applying ourselves to our duty, to our vocation, our common vocation as Christians. And yet, we, to do this, must be steadfast in the apostolic faith and be prophetic voices. There is great confusion in the church at present. There is great apostasy abroad. A great many people who are Christians don't even really believe in the necessity of salvation, possibly don't even believe in the prospect of the second coming, certainly seem not to believe in the prospect of divine judgment, and seem to suggest that conversion in this life from the ways of sin and, selfish and selfishness are not necessary to know the love of God. And yet, my brothers and sisters, the apostolic voices throughout the ages would decry them by saying, how, how can you, not, how can you know the love of God if you have not confessed and received his forgiveness? How can you know what it is to be loved by God if you have not known his mercy, his kindness, his generosity, his fatherliness toward us? How can you know God without repentance? quoted it before and I'll say it again but as Joanna Lumley used to say in a yogurt advert to truly appreciate what is good one must first have tasted what is wicked but it's also true the other way around to truly appreciate forgiveness one needs to recognize one's need for forgiveness and by golly my brothers and sisters our Lord as we reflected a few weeks ago is does not stint in his description of what waits those what will befall those who do not confess and repent and convert their lives? Great gnashing of teeth, wailing. Think of Lazarus and Dives, that great gulf between heaven and hell that cannot be crossed over. Think of all those warnings that he gave us on the first Sunday of Advent about the end times and what they portray. And indeed, my brothers and sisters, though Holy Mother Church's main theme of the second week of Advent is hope, we need to know what it is we need to have hope for. We need to have hope when we know the prospect of what is to come. We need to have hope and trust in God's charity and mercy toward us 
knowing the judgment that will come and knowing the decision that will be made. And yet truly if we live in the spirit and if we live in an in informed way understanding what the scriptures tell us we also know that the gospel tells us practically that we heap coals upon our own heads by what we do in this life when we transgress God's holy law when we ignore his law of charity when we do not pay him first duty in our minds and in our consciences and in our hearts we know that eternal damnation is the prospect for those who do not avail themselves of his love and mercy in this life but the good news as well as telling us the reality of what will be is that we can have hope that we who believe and trust in him we who recognize acknowledge and accept our need of his charity as expressed by the death of Christ upon the cross for our redemption who believe in the promise of the resurrection of the body of our Christian hope we have nothing to fear about the end times we have nothing to fear about the judgment that will come if we strive try continually in this life to apply ourselves to living in love and in union with him to the best of our abilities giving ourselves 200% to the endeavor and recognizing when we fail and seeking his forgiveness when we fail that we can then grow and move on and develop learning from our mistakes, not repeating them. At the end of confession, we hear those words that were given by our Lord to the Magdalene. Go in peace and sin no more. I remember too how the confessional and the sacrament of penance is like this parable of the prodigal son. The priest speaks the words of God the Father who waits to greet and embrace and say, I forgive you and I love you. And we who strive in this life to live the truth of the gospel and to share the truth of the gospel message can have this hope of the prospect of the loving kindness and mercy of God toward us. We who would yet have humble and contrite hearts we will not despise those who strive. But in our striving we must too strive to be prophetic voices to our world. We must tell them what is to come, how it will be, and what they need do now to not despair but to have hope. That they may come to the fullness and realization of that vocation which is for all people to come and see, repent and be baptized receive your salvation. In him who is God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
secula seculorum. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Dominus obispum, et cum spirito tuo, sosum porta, habemus ad Dominum. Gracias ad Augusto Domino Deum nostro. <coughs> Digno maiusto est. Vere digno e giusto ne stai come salutare i nostri vi sempre dubbi quel grazie sangere domine e sante padre ogni potenza eterna e Deus, per Cristo un domino nostro. Per quel che è stato il tuo grande d'angelo e adorando me l'azione estrema tua testata es, c'è in giorno un quel che tu te te beate sera che in soci sotto azione con genebra, con cui cosa nostri sforzi su te metti ubeste e pregamo un supplice e sportessione vicente. Sanctus. Sanctus.
sekula sekulorum. Amen. Ora nebus precetti salutaribus monetri de vine seclusione po mati ad enus dicere. Pate noster quies in celi santi vicetum non tum, ne venia regum tum, fiet voluntas tua, stipo di cielo e in terra. Pate nostro quadriano de nobis fogli, e dimite nobis debita nostra, stipo de nostri mitimus debitoribus nostris, e de nos invocasse in tentazione, se libera nostra madre. Secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Et cum spiritum tuo. Alius Dei, qui tolis peccatum ubi, miserere nobis. Alius Dei, qui tolis peccatum ubi, miserere nobis. Alius Dei, qui tolis peccatum ubi, Dona nobis pace. Ece angus Dei, ece qui tolit peccatum undi. Domine non sum dignus, ute tres subtectum meo, se tantum di verbo, et senabitur anima meo. Domine non sum dignus, ute tres subtectum meo, se tantum di verbo, et senabitur anima meo. Domine non sum dignus, ute tres subtectum meo, Se tantum de verbo, et se navitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion, the words for which you will find below your viewing screen. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen.
Jerusalem, sorge et seine censo et vide iuconditatem, que veniat et ibi a Deo tu. Sisters, may the divine assistance, may the souls, may the souls of the faithful departed for the mercy of God rest in 